Hello everybody, video here for you today. This is the no cap recap of the February 26, 2022 interview with Oak Island resident archaeologist Laird Niven, done by John on the QOOI, the Quest for Oak Island YouTube channel. There's a link in the video description if you'd like to watch John's entire hour and 25 minute interview with Laird Niven. I will start this recap by saying, obviously, Laird Niven nor anyone else will be saying anything about anything that happens on future episodes. Also, the interview hopped around a lot, and I grouped some things together for a better presentation. Let's get into it. There is an island in the North Atlantic where people have been looking for an incredible treasure for more than 225 years. Laird first got involved with Oak Island when he did work for both Dan Blankenship, pictured in the center here, and Fred Nolan, quote-unquote, previously. He did not give specific dates or findings. As far as the TV show, he got a call in Season 3, but production didn't follow up with him until Season 4, when metal detection expert Gary Drayton began finding a lot of significant artifacts on lot. 24 right there. Laird says that he is an independent contractor, but the other, other archaeologists that were on the show until the decision to cease archaeological work other than what Laird gets permits for were employees of Oak Island Tours, which is owned by the Lagina Brothers and others. When asked about CCH, Communities, Culture, and Heritage, a department in the Nova Scotia government, Laird says all work that he does on the island is under permit from them. And that they weren't ordered to shut down operations in the areas Laird found indigenous Mi'kmaq pottery in. It was just strongly recommended. Laird isn't an employee of the CCH. He gets paid by a production company in Nova Scotia. He also says that the CCH is the overriding authority on permits, but that they could get some pressure one way or the other from other parts of the government. Laird says that there have been two meetings with CCH representatives on the island and one with Ma elders, but didn't specify if those would be shown on the show. Laird says a lot of the digs in Nova Scotia have a Mi'kmaq liaison. At this point in the interview, Laird says they have found a lot of other indigenous items than just the pottery, but that's what the show production decided to focus on. Laird later says that there is no documented nor oral history of the Mi'kmaq on Oak Island. Laird described the new premier Tim Houston's visit by saying that he is a big fan of the show and that he obviously recognizes the economic benefits the show provides for Nova Scotia. John asked about the artifacts from when the Stone Wharf Road was built, and Laird said that it was oddly clean, just like Smith's Cove. Speaking of Smith's Cove, Laird says he thinks the work would be done there unless a tunnel or something that would be below the sea horizon is discovered, which is where they dug to. John shows Laird a screenshot from the Drilling Down Ultimate Timeline episode, and ask what does the entire breadth of finds tell you? Laird says, quote, To me, it's saying that there was undocumented activity pre-1795, end quote, which was when the money pit was discovered by Daniel McGinnis and friends. Laird mentions that he is a big Samuel Ball fan and thinks that his relationship with the British Navy is very exciting. He mentions the lead bag seal is very odd because it should only be found in a port where big bags of cloth are being unloaded. The lead bag seal as well as the lead Templar cross were both made with southern France lead. He says from an archaeologist's perspective you want to find a collection of artifacts, what we call context, so you can definitely say this was here for this long no doubt. John asks why they always focus on the earlier dates from carbon dating test ranges, and Laird said that's production, meaning the TV show focuses on that because the older it is, the better. He says there are two realities, the search and the TV show. Laird is not a big ship-in-the-swamp guy and is skeptical of the 660 
AD carbon dated wood found there, which is right here. It says where it says the ship's railing. Uh, he said there uh, could be gasoline contaminants and mentions the fact that it has been in the mud for so long. He says he thinks they did not do carbon dating on the barrel pieces found in the swamp. There's mention of a 1600s lead cross that was found in New Brunswick. Uh, I found this photo in the discovery date of June 2019. The one on Oak Island was found in 2017 and is bigger. Among the things Laird says he knows nothing about, whether the McGinnis and Ball House foundations will be revisited, most things money pit, this concrete piece presumably from the chapel vault that has gold content in it, which will be on the March 1st episode called Gold Diggers. John mentions that he is used to seeing wood come out of the caissons, but boulders is a new thing. I think that it's because it's a different area for the show and also that the caissons and the hammer grab are so much bigger this year. Here's some lightning round answers to some of the questions from callers. Rick Lagina's dream is to restore the island to what it once was. No one is allowed to camp on the island. This was Laird's first call-in show. The Mi'kmaq pottery found would usually be conical and sit in a fire for cooking. He reiterated that he wouldn't expect to find the breadth of structures and artifacts that have been found on Oak Island on any of the nearby islands. He has not personally looked at Zena Halpern's map. He tries to stay away from theories. Just half of the ball foundation was excavated and he hopes to do the other half. He knows that a lot of the rock walls that were on the island ended up being part of the causeway. The finds that he and Gary make are cataloged under different licenses, but they all end up at the Nova Scotia Museum. He thinks that with the new government leadership that most or all of them will be coming back to the island to be displayed in the Interpretive Center. He likes doing podcasts because he gets to explain archaeology, which isn't really done on the show. In reference to Samuel Ball, he began doing Black Loyalist research in 1998. Samuel Ball was one of the many slaves that were freed and returned for fighting for England in the Revolutionary War. His activities before Oak Island are well documented, not so much afterwards. Laird suspects he knew the McInneses or someone else on Oak Island that drew him there. Laird is not a Freemason, but he found out that his father was after his father's death. He doesn't know if the oak trees are indigenous to Oak Island, but he also hasn't heard that they've identified any oak trees that weren't indigenous. And they have had botanists on the island, including at the Ball Foundation. Uh, John brought up that he heard that Marty was trying to buy one of the few lots on Oak Island that the Laginas don't own, and also another island, but he didn't say if it was near Oak Island, though. After taking a week off for Abraham Lincoln, The Curse of Oak Island and Beyond Oak Island return for new episodes this Tuesday, March 1st. And I am Coach Steve Money. Real name is Steve Simpson. And I am a certified Ramsey Solutions financial coach. And you can schedule a free financial coaching consultation assessment with me at calendly.com slash coach Steve Money. That link is also in the description. You can email about coaching or anything that's on my YouTube channel, CoachSteveMoney at gmail.com. You can send channel donations if you are liking what you're hearing and seeing. PayPal.me slash CoachSteveMoney is that link. You can add me on Instagram, CoachSteveMoney, no spaces, and this YouTube channel is YouTube.com slash CoachSteveMoney. Thank you so much for all your support. Please like comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.